Hi and welcome to the channel. You've probably had that moment where you switch on your favorite power tool and it happens nothing. So today we're diving deep into one of the most common and yet easiest to fix problems with electrical hand tools, the switch failure. Best of it, you do not need the original spare part. Let's get started. As makers, as hobbyists, we have a problem. We have our tools around for a long time. We do not use them every day on a construction site under rough conditions, so our tools tend to get older. And this is a problem if it comes to spare parts. According to manufacturers and repair sites, 30 to 40% of all failures are switch related. So a simple on and off switch can be a problem because you can't find the replacement part. So what I did here is I took a standard rocker switch, but you can take a momentary push button as well if you like that better. You know, you let go your tool and it turns off. But anyways, the procedure will be the same. I show you what I did here and how I installed the switch into the machine housing and replaced the old one. Enough of talk, let's go. So this now is my machine I use here. As you can see, the switch is always jamming. I think it's a matter of a bad construction as the machine builds up a lot of dust, especially in that switch area. And that kind of jams the switch and I have to unplug the machine to make it stop working. That's not a safe operation at all. So even the original spare part wouldn't fix that problem. I had different angle grinders and they do not have the same problem. Whatever I do here, you can transfer to any other machine. The first step for me is always cleaning the machine. So I use a vacuum, some compressed air or a wet towel to clean the machine from the outside. Then I disassemble everything, clean it from the inside, grease the bearings and so on. So that I can see what is going on inside, what is up with the machine, are there different kind of failures in there. And the most important part during the disassembly is that we get to the switch. We need the original switch to read the data from that so that we know what kind of replacement switch we need. This is a switch I removed from my machine here and I just want to go through the signs and markings here so that you know how to read it and what you must buy or can buy for your machine. First of all, most of the switches are closer switches. This is what this little sign down there means. And it is a momentary push button in that case. I want to replace that. You can take a closer switch or a momentary push button, doesn't matter. But this is what you need in 99% of all cases. Second thing, the voltage. The voltage of your grid is important. Here this switch can deal with 250 volts and this is what I need. So my new switch has to have 250 volts. Next thing, and this is the most important part, are the amps that you, yeah, the, your switch can deal with. And the important number is the number in the brackets because this may, means an inductive load. So a motor that turns. It's not a light you're switching on, it's a motor. So you need a switch that can deal, in my case here, with 12 amps inductive load. These are the most important technical data here, voltage and amps. The 5E4 back there means the switch cycles that the switch could yeah, withstand or survive. This is not as important here, but voltage, in my case 250, and 12 amps inductive load. So my new switch has to have at least these values. Higher is better. These are two possible switches I could have used here. First, the very big round momentary push button. So I decided to go with big swi switches here so that you can use it with gloves. Or you can take, as I did it here, the relatively small rocker switch. And I decided to go with a rocker switch uh, because this one I could install at the place of the original trigger. And both are with dust caps, as dust is one of the problems of this machine. I really want to go with that option. You can see me now installing the rocker switch.
After a successful dry run, I went out and cut my concrete tiles. So as you can see, it is very easy to yeah, give your electrical tools a second life and bring them back. I hope you liked that video. Share, like, subscribe. And if you have anything, let me know in the comments. I will return to you. I hope I see you next time around here, guys. Happy crafting.